Hi everyone, it's Melissa and today I will be sharing some books I plan to read for the TBR Clear Out Readathon in April. So this readathon is hosted by Katie from Books and Things and the basic idea is to prioritize a book or many books that you have been putting off for one reason or another that have been sitting on your shelves. Um, sitting on your TBR for a long time that you need to kind of just clear out of your life. So how I chose to pick my books for this readathon um, was to go to my Goodreads because I've been using that for since um, 2011 and there are some books on my TBR there that have been there since 2011 uh, that I have not got to yet. So what I did is I looked for the um, books that were on my Goodreads for the longest, and then I cross-referenced that with books that I owned, and I was able to find um, two, no, three books that have been on my TBR since 2011, 2012. So I was able to find three books that have been on my TBR since about 2011 or so um, that I also own. And there was another book that hasn't been on the TBR for quite that long, but it's been at least over five years that I also own um, that I keep meaning to get to. So I'm also going to put that on my TBR for the um, TBR Clear Out. So the first book has been on my TBR since 2011, and it's The Time Traveler's Wife by, I don't know how to say her name, I'm going to try, Audrey Neffenegger, I'm going to say. Neffenegger? I don't know. But this is about um, a couple who are meeting at different points in their lives. It sounds like non-chronologically. Um, I read the blurb in the back and it mentions how he, what's the main character? Henry meets um, Claire. When he first meets her, she has already known him since she was like five or six years old. So clearly there's an element of um, getting to know someone when they already seem to know you and and vice versa. So that's really interesting. Um, it obviously piqued my interest a long time ago, so I'm going to prioritize reading that this month. The next book that I hope to get to is Love in the Time of Cholera by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. This has also been on my TBR since 2011. So this is about um, two people who fall in love um, but they go their separate ways and she ends up marrying someone else and has a entire life with this person. Um, but then that husband, um, dies after a, an entire married life together and her, um, former lover, the other main character, he has been, I think, kind of waiting for her and pining for her this whole time. And so, um, tries to come back into her life 50 years after... <laughs> they broke up. So I'm usually not one for romance stories, um, but this just sounded really intriguing. And here I have like, it sounds like two romances <laughs> picked out. So we'll see how much romance there is. Um, but sounds like a really interesting premise and I will be happy to clear this off my TBR shelf as well. So the next book has also been on my TBR since 2011 or 2012. And I think it's just one of those books that because it's a classic, I just figured like, oh yeah, well, I'll get to it sometime, clearly. I'll get to it sometime, right? And years go by and you're like, okay, I need to pick this up. Um, I think I'm just taking it for granted that this book is going to be around and going to be loved forever. So what's the hurry? We're going to prioritize it for April. And that's Pride and Prejudice, uh, Prejudice, oh my god, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I've actually never read any Jane Austen. Um, I know she is well loved. Um, and if you watched my, I think it was my like booktube newbie tag maybe, um, in one of my first one or two videos I mentioned that I am very underread in my classics and though that's something that I'm hoping to change this year. So I'm hoping to pick up classics. Um, more frequently during the year. And we're gonna start with this one. It's, it's, it's kind of weird because on the one hand, I've been wanting to read this for a long time, but on the other hand, because it is so well-loved and there's like 
hype's not the right word, but there's so much like love surrounding this book that I think another reason I haven't picked it up is a small part of me is like, yeah, but what if I don't like it? So we're going to see if I don't like it. If I don't like it, it's okay. It's okay not to like a classic, right? Right. We're going to try it uh, in April as well. And the last book I'm hoping to get to is something that um, hasn't been on my TBR for, well, I say for too long, but it's been on my TBR for years. Who am I kidding? Um, but that is Fragile Things by Neil Gaiman. So this is a collection of short stories. And so I think I'm just going to slowly pick away at this during the month of April. I normally, I like to have either a book of short stories or a book of poetry kind of to pick away at during the month as I read other things. So um, it's kind of long, but I think over the course of a month, it, I'll get through it. Um, I've only ever read Neil Gaiman novels. I've never read any of his short stories. And, you know, I feel like some authors just shine in one um, format versus another. So I'm inter interested to see whether I'll enjoy his short stories as much as um, the couple of novels of his that I've read. So I'm going to read just a couple of little blurbs from stories in here. They sound right up my alley. Um, a mysterious circus terrifies an audience for one extraordinary performance before disappearing into the night, taking one of the spectators along with it. That sounds like something I'll really enjoy. Um, there's also a novella in here that's a follow-up to American Gods, and I liked that book. Uh, it wasn't one of my favorites, but I liked that. Um, there's also a story in here featuring Sherlock Holmes. Anyway, it, it sounds like something I'll enjoy, but we shall see how I fare with Gaiman's short stories. I just realized I never did give um, a synopsis about Pride and Prejudice, but do I really have to? It's a classic I think everyone knows. Although I will say I don't, I don't know how the story, how that story resolves itself um, because I live a spoiler-free life and I'm just in my bubble and I can go decades without learning anything about a classic somehow. It's a superpower, I suppose. Um, so yeah, those are the four books I hope to get to. And then I have a couple of extras just in case I have extra time. I don't think I will. I don't read a ton of books um, in the course of a month, but just in case, another couple of books that haven't necessarily been on my TBR for the longest, but I happen to own and have been there for at least a couple years um, are Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I have also not read a book by any of the Bronte sisters. So if I have time, um, I'm a little bit more interested to get to Austin, uh, to Jane Austen first. But if I have time, I will read Wuthering Heights. Or depending on my mood, I might pick up uh, Dumbledore. Dubliners by James Joyce. I have read, um, I believe this is really a collection of short stories because I think as I was flipping through, I recognized one of the titles as a short story I had to read for a class in university, um, which I didn't actually care for that short story. So we'll see if I get to this, how I feel about it. So those are the um, four plus books that I hope to get to in April. Um, Thanks to Katie for putting this readathon together. I think it's such a good idea to just clear out some of those uh, long-time TBR that those books that are just sitting there for, for way too long. And let me know if you're participating or comment below if you are currently reading something that's been sitting on your shelves for a long time. All right, everyone. Take care and we'll talk to you later. Bye.